Well, thank you everyone for uh, taking some time out of your busy day, uh, or wherever you are, whether it's evening, uh, morning, or afternoon. Uh, we hope this is a worthwhile time for you, and we're out. We're here to talk about actually a new release from Siren on Siren 14, which um, is, as you're going to see, um, we think um, has some fairly significant, almost game changing, and you're, you're going to see us use terms like you know, a paradigm shift in the market as with, with what we're delivering in this release. And I don't say that cavalierly uh, because, as Sadie mentioned, uh, I've been in this business for about 25 years. Uh, I did run I2, so I, I probably have met many of you that are on this over the time I ran uh, their North American, uh, actually the Americas for them, for the sales group. So I spent a lot of time with, with analysts and uh, researchers in the business. So uh, I think it's fair to say I've seen enough that with this release, it's fair to call it a game changing. And I hope you see that uh, over the next little while here. So let me run down the agenda quickly. This is this is the welcome. And then I'm going to turn it over to Jefferson after I uh, share a few things with you about what we're hoping to accomplish today. And you did you did uh, hear me say paradigm and game changing. Really like to know what you think about it. Uh, if we re really are on to things the way we think we are, uh, it should be a very interesting demo for you. Um, unlike you may not have seen before, Benny Wang, who works with us also, uh, Benny is a uh, he's a badge carrying sworn officer, and he's going to give you some testament about uh, how he uses this uh, this new product in the field as well. Uh, we're going to share about you know, there's oh, there's always been a notion about sharing data or democratizing data or intelligence. How do we get you know, the data that we have, the valuable data that we have in more hands of more people in the organization? And I think you'll find interesting what, what this release does from that standpoint. How do we make everyone more productive? And for all the analysts we've been working with and helping for years, you know, thank you for all your hard work, everything you do. And we're here to tell you we're, we're going to make not you better at your jobs, but imminently more productive with tools that are that are um, uh, much easier to work with, give you much more capabilities to do what you do as you want to do it um, and scale uh, the investigations quite dramatically. So we, we know what you're up against every day. And uh, everyone in this organization, um, we talk about mission all the time. And we, we talk about how do we get fast, actionable leads out to people who need them and be major league focused on officer safety. And we talk about that to everyone in the organization. What can we do to help uh, from that standpoint? Because the, the things that you face, there's a list of them here, and it's growing this horrific problem that we're having with fentanyl usage, right? The smash and grabs that we see on television every day, organized crime getting even more automated and they, they have tools like you and they have unlimited budgets. We hear about trafficking. We hear about having to vet police because we may hire the wrong people. We can't afford to do things like that. So we know what you're up against and, and, and we're here to help. Uh, and we are, uh, we hope to be part of the mission because we take it quite seriously. Our mission is pretty straightforward, not unlike many of yours, to keep people, assets, and networks safe. So without too much further ado, because uh, I'm going to spend a, a little bit of time summarizing a couple slides, uh, there's two things I'd like you to keep in mind. The capabilities that we are going to show you around how you use search, the ease of use, and the depth of what we bring back in a few simple clicks is virtually unparalleled today. The other piece that you will see is how we reach out to not just the analysts who we work with and, and we're working with for years and we've taken all your input and into the product, but how do we how do we actually empower the rest of the team, the rest of the law enforcement team to include the entire um, entourage, which I'm going to talk to, to a mobile device that can sit in the back pocket packet a back pocket of a patrolman. We'll show you how that works, okay? So um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague um, to, uh, to take you through a demonstration of this. I uh, hope you find it as interesting and as powerful as um, uh, we, we think it is. 
Thanks, Philip. I appreciate for the introduction there. Uh, yeah, so just focusing on uh, what Sarn has been doing for quite a while, right? Like we have been very successful in providing uh, oh, what I like to say it's the leading investigative technology in the market to uh, facilitate investigations, case building, uh, connecting the dots across disparate data sets, uh, and uh, this toolkit like that enables like analysts and investigators to uh, do complex and sophisticated investigations in a simpler way, right? Uh, and this is what we've been doing for a few years. Like uh, we have been very successful. Like so we have some of the uh, largest names in this domain uh, as our customers. Uh, but we want to reach the next barrier, right? Like uh, so, we want to go through uh, what is the next evolution of it. Now that we we are able to uh, enable analysts and investigators to do. Uh, all this series of uh, activities that involve are involved in investigation. How do we facilitate bringing this power uh, and all this information we have access to uh, to other users that might not be uh, as experiencing analytical tools, or they they don't have the time to uh, uh, necessarily go through training and learn how to interact with these tools, but they could benefit from the access to the data, right? And this is where we introduced Siren 14. This has been a release where we pushed uh, uh, our search experience, uh, which it goes a lot beyond traditional search. So it actually combines search uh, with real-time data uh, fusion. So like you, you are able to search for an individual and learn everything there is to know about that individual, right? And we then bundle this in a way that can be consumed uh, by different audiences. So be it like uh, officers on the field, uh, which Benny will talk about later a little bit more, or command staff or other support areas inside of the organization uh, that don't necessarily need to be trained uh, to access the data, right? Like, so they can just jump in uh, search for what they're looking for and get insights, not just data, but uh, actually insights and intelligence uh, formed in the results immediately. So they get everything they need to know about um, something they're looking for. And this is the way we, we design a solution. And I'll jump in like uh, uh, doing a live demonstration so we can go into a little bit more detail. But like, uh, as you can see in some of the screens here, this uh, can be accessed like in a normal desktop computer, tablets, mobile phones, and so on to create that seamless uh, uh, access uh, in a way that we can democratize the access to information inside the organization, uh, regardless of device uh, that uh, the individual is using. So uh, with that, uh, I'll jump into the fun part, which is, the real software. So let me switch my screen here and we get this started. Okay, so I, I will start here. This is part of the traditional things we have been building, right? Uh, and this is just a very simple view that we, we can build inside Siren. Like uh, in this case, we just loaded public incidents from San Francisco. This is actually real data. Um, I like to map uh, the the uh, instance uh, around the city and it, very quickly you can already see like trends and patterns and so on so uh, I'd like to say that uh, uh, cr criminals these days uh, don't like to work over time anymore so they do mostly business hours so you see like the instance of burglary and uh, vehicle theft here is all uh, right after lunchtime is the busiest uh, time. And they also don't want to do uh, long weekends anymore, right? Like, so they, they want to enjoy some quiet time. So they work mostly on Wednesdays uh, to not interrupt their holidays, you know? So it, it, you can very quickly see this type of information. And this is what we've been doing very successfully. Uh, but then we wanted to bring some of these capabilities as well uh, to a wider audience. So here we get into the search part, which it starts with a very simple uh, interaction that we are all used to, be it like uh, using Google, Bing, or uh, shopping websites and so on. Uh, whenever we are looking for something in our uh, daily lives, like we're, 
we would normally use a, a, a standard search, but a, a not as often present like a, a, a in a lot of uh, organizations. So in this case, you can search for uh, anything you would like to know, be it a person, a car plate, an address, whatever it is directly here. So I'll just use the example here of Mary Do. Uh, if I type her name, uh, you see like a, it's such uh, everything I have in my database for uh, the, the records of Mary Do, right? And in this case here, there's a record of an individual that is a perfect match. There's others that only met partially following, but like um, uh, we can see everything we have in the database. So like the details, pictures, addresses, locations, but it, it also will bring data from other connected sources, right? So you see, as I use the search, some of the data here, it loads incrementally. And the reason is this is not a static view. This is actually, uh, Siren is pulling this data in real time uh, from different data sets. Because like your cases will come from CAD and RMS data, uh, normally like that it, you would be looking into. Then you might have a, a vehicle registration database uh, that will have like the list of vehicles like this. Then you might have another system for license plate readings, which is what we are seeing here. The places, the less locations that per vehicles were spotted. And then you can click here and see more details about that specific vehicle and so on. Uh, but like a, overall, you should get a complete picture uh, immediately, right? And this is just a very basic search in case if you had the name of the person. But uh, uh, if we look at a more traditional, maybe a law enforcement way of searching things, uh, if we got a lead that's like a, a suspect of uh, drug dealing uh, was seen uh, getting uh, going into Rosemont Place, uh, and it was a uh, male, uh, late twenties or early thirties. Uh, we can simply type here like Rosemont uh, as an an address, and then we can open here what we call the dynamic filters, right? And th this is a very interesting approach because we uh, emulated the experience that is provided by. Uh, e-commerce websites a lot of the time. So Amazon will be the most popular. And I like to mention Amazon because I think our filters are much better than what Amazon does. But anyway, uh, we, we will go into uh, the details here. Uh, so they are tailored based on the data that you are searching. So if I'm searching for different things, these filters change automatically. In this case, because I'm looking a lot for people records, uh, you see that when I type Rosemont here, it narrows down across all my data uh, there's 40 records of people that mention Rosemont right, as an address. Uh, and it could be anywhere in their records, but like in this case, mostly addresses. Uh, it, it drills down into the filters that are appropriate for what I'm searching. If I clear this, you see that it goes back to a full list of filters that involves all the data that I'm looking into. And I can choose, for example, vehicles. It will show only vehicle characteristics. If I choose everything, it will give me the best possible list as I go through the search to find that, right? And that helps uh, the users to not need to know what they can search for. We actually tell them what they can search for to help them be as quick as possible and not have to memorize any information, right? So in this case, uh, as soon as we look at here, I can mark male, uh, then the age group was late 20s, early 30s, so 26, 34. Uh, and I can apply the filter, it brings me to four different results, right? That match my criteria. Now I can have a, a look here into the details of each of these individuals to see if there is any correlation. Uh, we'll see that as soon as we get here to the third record, we have Roger Underwood, right? And Roger Underwood uh, has a distinct characteristic here uh, because he is marked with violent behavior, which I will explain in a second. Uh, and also, like, he has been involved in 24 different incidents. Uh, and these are, like, the three last incidents he has been involved, including one which is a drug offense. Uh, so we can immediately see that there could be a correlation with what we are looking for here, right? Uh, but it, that's not all. Like, we can really compose pieces of intelligence to help uh, provide the best possible information based on the data underlying, right? So we also... Uh, in real time, looked at it together with Roger Underwood here. In these 24 cases, 
He has also been involved 17 times with another individual. So this other individual here, uh, which I, I can click here to uh, see the record if I want to, uh, I can see that he is often a common co-perpetrator uh, co in this instance, right? Uh, I can see Roger Underwood cars, vehicles here, like uh, locations where he has been spotted before. But this flag, I think it's very common uh, in law enforcement, right? Like uh, it's a part of uh, improving officer safety. As soon as you have a record of an individual, we screen all the previous cases has been involved. And if there has been incidents that involve violence, he gets a flag marked with violent behavior, right? Either that or if someone manually flags him. So in this case, officers can immediately know to engage with care, uh, take necessary precautions to have like a, a, a correct procedure to uh, optimize the operation, right? So in this case, it looks like it's something that I'm looking for, this record. So I want to start an investigation with it, right? So I'll simply select the record here for Roger Underwood and uh, I'll create a new investigation here. Call it webinar investigation and you, we can open our list of cases here like and so you can see it nearly created here webinar investigation it has the record of roger underwood inside that looks interesting now maybe i want to search what else do i know about roger underwood across all my records right so i'm just gonna search here for his name and you see that we get matches here instantaneously like in cases cell phone messages, uh, a number of individual records, vehicles, and so on. Now, cell phone messages is an interesting one because uh, this usually comes from a forensic extraction. So in this case, it means that Roger Underwood was apprehended before uh, and his device was uh, 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 has gone through forensic extraction with the digital forensics team and we can see the contents right related to him. So in this case here, I just open these messages and we can see there's a number of different communications. As you, you, you see, the results adapt to the type of data we are looking at. So before, because we were looking at the person, we could see incidents and vehicles, but now because we are looking at messages, we can see the threads, dates, uh, who he was talking to and et cetera. And uh, we know Roger Underwood here was the receiver uh, of these messages in a lot of cases, but we don't know the source in, in a lot of cases. We only know the phone number. We don't have the details of who he was talking to. But if we have that phone in our database, we, we make the match, right? So as we go down here, you see that in certain cases, he was talking to John Garcia, which we know his phone number belongs to him. Uh, and in this other case, he was talking to Zachariah Shore. So if we have a quick look on the messages here, we'll see like that they, they in this conversation mentioned like, oh, let's talk on Telegram. And uh, there's a Telegram account mentioned here. And then they, they say like, they got that fatty, uh, which is, is length for fentanyl, right? So the, this communication seems suspicious to me. So I'm gonna add it to uh, my case here. So I'm not investigation. And, uh, and that starts building my investigation here, right? Now I can continue to look for a number of different angles, things that I think it's pertinent, uh, different individuals and so on. And once I'm happy uh, with the data I've collected here, uh, then I can shift the perspective here to uh, do a link analysis of this, or we call it a graph, uh, and start composing that investigation. So those records I had added to my investigation are immediately shown here, and we can start drilling down into more details you see that Siren uh, automatically connects records to everything you have in your database, right? So this is the power of it, is actually uh, bringing it all together and stitching the data in a way that you everything you need to know uh, is connected. So you see on top of Roger Underwood here, I have a number 28. This is a number of other records connected to his personal record. And this message has another 10 records connected to it. So if I just select them, and I have a look on the relations they have here. I can see vehicles, phones, emails, cases. Uh, we've seen that he's in a number of cases. I won't bring all of them now. Like I'll add everything else here and we see. Uh, 
So we can very quickly start composing an investigation here. Now, based on this, you can see there's a cluster of communication here, which I'll add to see what else is connected to it. So I'll add everything else here. Uh, and we can see like his communications with Zachariah Short, the individual we saw the message earlier. Uh, but we also flag that the phone of Zachariah Short uh, has been associated with an Instagram account called DreamN8, which we can double click here to see what else we know about it. Uh, there is also uh, the Telegram account mentioned this future. So we can again uh, open here to see what's about it. Now, if we look into the details of this, uh, this is actually like part of our open source data collection. Uh, we're collecting uh, people advertising drugs uh, on social media platforms. And in this case, the social media account that has been mentioned has been referenced in a Twitter post selling drugs. So we can see the post here. Now it's interesting because this text of this post is actually a, a real post that we collected from Twitter. So the, it's actually uh, real, this uh, prints here. And it, it mentions this Telegram account specifically. So there's a connection with uh, an advertising to sell drugs with this Telegram account that is used by Zachariah Short. And he was talking in connection with Roger Underwood in this case, right? Now there's more details about his Instagram account on the dark web as well being used. And a, a number of other things here uh, in this, uh, investigation. So I can keep expanding this like and, and adding more details, put my own personal notes, right? Uh, and compose a full investigation here uh, in a way that uh, I can identify everything I know about these individuals, right? But then once I'm happy with it, I can simply select here uh, my prime suspect, Roger Underwood, and ask, for example, to uh, get a graph report. Now, what we've done in this case, we integrate like a SARN to uh, a large language model uh, in Azure uh, in a private cloud. And we process this graph and create a, a, an integration with a prompt to it uh, in a way that it, it produces a written report from any graph, right? Uh, and it takes a little while. So you see here it's loading and doing the, all of this live. Uh, but it should come back yeah, shortly with a report. So it, it will put here all the findings, all the individuals' records, communications they had between each other, the vehicles that were mentioned, social media accounts, like the what was done on the dark web. And then it makes a little conclusion. Uh, and you see this is actually quite good at uh, uh, interpreting some of the connections in the texts uh, the, in the communication. So it even will say like the mention of fat in their conversation could indicate a connection to illicit substances. Um, so it, it's actually quite effective. Uh, and this is just a, an initial template that you then can download here in Word format. So the analyst can then add their own insights and continue the uh, producing the report, right? And this is a very quick way, like it, it, it takes only a few minutes to go from knowing nothing but the characteristics of a suspect to actually finding it, throwing it into a case, building an investigation, seeing everything we have to know and producing a report, right? So this is what we uh, aim to do with uh, SIRM 14. It's bridging this gap, like a, and streamlining this process in a way that a lot more people can benefit from the power of the data that we have harnessed with SARN, right? And this is the, the key aspect here. Uh, a lot of users might be able to go into the graph, but others might uh, simply uh, stick to the information that uh, they can see in the search, especially if they're on the field and, and doing uh, a quick action, like they might uh, mostly search uh, and work with the results here. Just perfectly fine, but we now can adapt to the different audiences in a way that we can reach the whole organization and, and they can decide how far they want to go. Uh, so we don't have any barriers anymore uh, for people accessing this. Like I showed before, all of this is available as well on a mobile interface uh, and it can be leveraged like by different audiences uh, depending on the access they would have. Now, uh, I will stop here and uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Benny, uh, which 
will give you a little bit more of the insights of how this has been working on the field uh, and how we can leverage this experience now to make a real impact uh, in the use cases. So over to you, Benny. Awesome, thank you. Um, bring up the slides again. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So thank you, Jefferson, for that awesome demo and showing how Siren can be used. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, some of the problems facing law enforcement uh, with these types of investigations, many challenges that we have today, and how we use Siren to overcome uh, many of these problems. This is a good slide because um, for most of you out there who actually do digital forensics or any kind of um, investigations regarding looking into cell phones, we all understand and are kind of pained by some of these problems. For instance, uh, individual phone term searches where you're looking for specific terms, keywords, takes a while to get back from any kind of an image. The constant loading and reloading of images, you know, obviously end of your workday, you turn off your computer or you remove the device. But when you put it back in, it takes 25, 30 minutes to get uh, get that image back up and capable uh, to do your to continue on your investigation. Um, the manual, you know, so what happens when you do find those results, right? There's that manual uh, logging of information into uh, into worksheets, into uh, Word documents, and then just to be able to go back to your internal systems, external systems like uh, you know, so some of the consented data providers or your internal CAD and RMS systems, just to initiate that search to bring it back into one place. Now we uh, we overcome that problem where the paradigm shift is um, now with Siren and especially Siren 14, we have a user-friendly way to be able to directly interact with that data that's sitting right there and not needing to do again that swivel chair effect where you're moving around from data source to data source to data source having to learn a bunch of different uh, front end user interfaces you move to the next slide so here is uh, in fact a pretty funny picture so as you are all familiar now with uh with roger underwood this is uh, Siren brought up in my car, obviously no private information of any real people are in this picture, but if you can just imagine uh, officers on the street being able to access the same type of information as any analyst would in the office or being able to access that additional information where dispatch is potentially tied up and not able to, to, to service your, any of your requests before you come into contact with a person or if you... Um, before any kind of an operation, I could see this being used and what we have used um, to be able to, uh, you know, during crime scene, be able to find out additional intelligence on um, on people that uh, that may exist or are related to, uh, to the suspects that we're looking for. Um, this can also be used in scenarios where detectives are out there with no MDTs, right? Um, where they only have uh, a handheld device in their phones or, or even mobile command centers where they need the power of an analyst and all, uh, all the things within the office, but out in the field. So, oh, and to even monitor anything that's actively developing. So those are just a couple of the, uh, the use cases we've seen um, out there uh, you know, live in the field. Um, so very quickly, and uh, back to you, Phil. Thank you, Benny. You know, be, before I run a, a few slides to sort of pull things together here, I want you to stop and think about something. Think about the demonstration that um, you were just given. Uh, at, with, and, and, of course, we're coaching and speaking and teaching and showing you. Think about if you knew the tool the way Jefferson knew it. Think about how quickly he put together that investigation, the amount of detail that went into it wasn't terribly complex, but, you know, he tied Roger Underwood to Zachariah. He went out to multiple different systems to include LPR, case data, clear, uh, open source. He said it can go to the dark web. If he wasn't talking and teaching and he was working on an investigation, that would have been put together inside of about five minutes. I would suggest to you that is where we're talking about a paradigm shift with the search capabilities and the filters that we put into this. So you'd be the judge of that, right? But one of the things, one of the reasons we focused on this business 
and we, I've seen it over many, many years, is the frustration by investigators and analysts about the time-consuming manual effort they go through. Very smart people know their business, but we're not, we've never really equipped them with the right tools, in my estimation. And we, we've done a number of research, but I thought this was really interesting, that 92% said, the manual methods really slow me down. How do I scale? How do I do more? I have the capabilities, but I don't have the tools. And it's not about having enough data, right? There's more than enough data. There's more than enough crumbs to put together in an investigation, more than you need, right? But what are the data sources that you do need to do an investigation? On average, we find somewhere between eight and 10 data sources is what, uh, on average, an analyst uses. Now, think about those. You go from screen to screen to user interface to user interface. Some of them have graphs, different reporting. And what do you do? You print, you cut, you paste, you put them in spreadsheets, and you come back and you build your model. It's, it's cumbersome. It's hard. You lose train of thought. There's too much data, and there's too much movement in between systems and too much to learn. So we've shifted that paradigm directly as well and said, why don't we have an interface? A, you've, you, you've seen the system in action a little bit where all of those data sources, the ones that you need, the ones that you work on, the ones you go back and forth to, the ones you cut and paste on are all in one single shop, one single pane of glass. That's what we do. We have one, one site I can think of, very large law enforcement agency, We've got 57 different data sources. And that's their analyst sitting there accessing the data that's required, never leaving your chair. Think of the focus, think of the time savings, think of the search capabilities you see. If you want to scale your investigations, be able to do more with less, we think we're on to something here. I, I bring this to your attention, not, not for an eye chart. We did a poll with um, uh, a government business council and, and uh, there's a there's a downlink um, that you can uh, take a look at if you're interested uh, to download the research. Most people don't, but if you're interested, it, it's it's research that comes from folks like you. I'm not going to go into a lot of d detail, but if you look in the bottom right, difficulty finding employees with the right technical ability. I would say I, I understand why that was reported that way, but I think we just don't give them the right tools. We've got some fabulous people worked with over the years and continue to work with. Let's give them the tools to be much more effective because they did, they know what they're doing, but they, we're, we're, we just put them in a position where their job is difficult, right? We talk about connecting to multiple data sources. Well, that's just what we showed you. Don't leave the siren interface. It's easy. It's simple. The search is amazing. All these disparate data sources, you don't, you, you, we access them automatically and bring the data you need into one single interface, one single tool. And investigations take long. Let's cut that. Let's scale it. Let's let's make these these people imminently more productive and let them really use the skill set they have. So if you go to the next the slide, I'll show you something that's sort of interesting. Comes back to something. This was in the poll as well. You know, talked about um, if if AI was more integrated into the tools that you have, what would you expect? And the piece that I found interesting here, and we listened, we looked at this poll and we took it pretty seriously. The ability for searches to give more information to more people in the organization. We don't want everyone to be analysts. We don't want everyone to be investigators. But with the amount of data we collect and how much we can scale, why can't what we looked at each other and said, why can't we empower the entire organization? Different user interfaces, different tools, different needs, different requirements. But if we have it, let's truly democratize the data. Let's truly share the data. Let's truly share the intel across the entire organization. Uh, by the way, um, that if that, that is the uh, the source code. If you want to get to the poll, you can download that as well. Um, we seem to get a lot of interest in this because this represents you know all the information we've collected from you. So think about this. We've been focused on the analyst. Most of our competitors focus on the analyst. But if we have that information, what does an investigator need that an analyst doesn't need? 
What is the command staff? If you noticed, when we started this out, we, we had a, a Comstat product up there. Many of you have a Comstat product today, but with the amount of data we have and the customizable nature of it and, and how easy it is to configure, and you can even put real-time feeds into that to look at sentiment in a crowd in a protest. What does that mean to a command staff on allocating resources? So it's there, it's available. It comes with the product if you want to use it. You know, Benny has used it. Benny has built it for his chief um, and loves it, okay? And then we talked about officer safety. We talked about awareness. You go away from that MDT, you walk up to a house, you see a car in the driveway that you hadn't seen before. You take that license plate and you realize this is not just Roger Underwood you're talking to, but there's another person. And maybe it was Zachariah Short. Maybe it was somebody else. Maybe I need backup. And that is done with very simple point and click, by the way, on a device that is in most officers' back pocket. When they go home at night, what do they do? They take out their phone, they call their wife, they text a friend, they order a pizza. But there's no real, uh, how do I get people to use this? They know the phone. What, ha what you have to do is make it simple, a few clicks, and give pertinent information to help them in their jobs. So that's how we sort of shifted we laser focused on the analyst, but if we have this data, let's empower the organization to be able to do more um, with that data they have. So I'd love to put up a bunch of these um, because we've got a, we do have a number of them, but just based on time, I sort of like this one because it it sort of hits home everybody. The things we see around human trafficking are just appalling. They're just appalling, but it's the reality. But um, here's a note from Aaron, who's a, who's a great user of our siren has helped reduce the time to do an image search for a child by 40 to 45%. It's also taking 60 to 70, 60 to 70% less time to generate a report to provide to the agency. So we, we have a lot of these folks who are just uh, using the product and absolutely love it. Um, and and we're, we're, part, we're very glad to be part of the mission. So um, with that, I think that sort of concludes what we wanted to walk you all through. Uh, I hope you can see the power of what that product was doing. Like I said, take away Jefferson talking to you and think of the points and clicks he did. And by the way, how cool is the uh, automatic reporting gr gr graph to report? A lot of people look at a, at a graph and they, they, they just don't visualize it the way some of us do. Graph to report, summary there. I mean, <laughs> big, big, big productivity gains there in, in just a few minutes. So um, with that, um, I'll open up to my colleagues if I've missed anything to share or, uh, or we'll open it to questions um, if there are any. Thank you, by the way. All right, so it looks like we have a few questions. So the first question is, we are one of the largest police departments in the country with a large number of data sources. Are there any issues with scale? Uh, I, I, I'll take that. I, I referenced it before. We work with, um, we can scale way up or we can scale way down. We have users that have as few as two analysts, um, and we have uh, the largest single, uh, the police department in the world with 50, 57 different data sources, uh, and there's no issue with performance at all. We sit on a uh, uh, an elastic search platform, which is arguably the most scalable platform um, for search capabilities. Um, I say on the world or in the planet, but I don't mean to stretch it, but it's, it's, we have no problem scaling up or down and have customers in both in both areas. Thank you. Um, now we have another question. <clears throat> what type of files can Siren import? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm happy to answer that. Um, you, you can import directly through the UI, like uh, spreadsheets, CSVs, uh, if you normally upload like uh, uh, other files uh, in, in in your internal platform as well, like uh, pictures, documents, etc., like we can integrate with that uh, to keep the privacy. And 
but like it, in general uh data can be important from almost any source so be it like databases we we import data from forensic extractions coming like from celebrite we import data from all sorts of sources so um uh, we, we still haven't found one we couldn't deal with but uh, uh, if there is a specific one you would like to know uh let me know and i can confirm that for you thank you jefferson now we have um another question can you connect to database views created within mssql or mysql and import into your application yeah excellent uh, uh uh like I, I was saying like uh, we can actually connect like uh, to pretty much any uh, database the relational database is like mysql or microsoft sql like would be uh, very straightforward so that it, the, those are in fact like some of the easiest to deal with <laughs> like uh, uh we do with more complicated ones like when we have forensic extraction from devices and uh batch files and so on uh but uh, yeah, like we, we can bring data from almost any source. Thank you. You know, Jefferson, if I can add to that, not, mm -hmm. not just the databases and the data sources, but I talked about in the beginning all the different data sources, the third-party data sources are out there. And they change and they multiply. And sometimes you, you, you may stop the subscription and get another one because it's less expensive or has more detail. We have over 2,000 different sources that we reach out to. So you may only need eight or 10, that's fine. But think about those third-party data sources integrated and commingled with OSINT data that you bring in, integrated in investigation with your source systems, your RMS, your CAD, your JMS. Think about all of that opportunity for those types of your in-house data, OSINT data, and any of those third parties coming into one screen, coming into one workstation. Sort of changes the dynamics of your job dramatically since. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, we have another follow-up question. Um, so this one is from Stephen Arnold. He says that yesterday they were testing a new open source software called REOR. They learned um, that contend had to be in the markdown in markdown format the system could not handle PDFs. Do you sell additional adapters or filters, for example, PDF to Markdown? Well, like we have imported PDF data before. Uh, so PDF, there's two different strategies, right? Um, you have structured PDFs, like uh, when someone actually produced a PDF, like from a Word document or uh, something like that, then it, we can uh, scrape the content of the PDF, right? Like so. And we do a number of things with it. Like I, obviously the demo here was quite short, so I didn't cover, I only covered what we did in Siren 14. I didn't cover all the capabilities in Siren, but like normally we parse through NLP, uh, uh, most of the text coming in. So we extract like uh, mentions of people, addresses, companies, all sorts of things in these documents as well. But like the, so this data coming from a structured PDF is very simple. So that can come in, uh, but if you have PDFs that have um, pictures, so a lot of the times the PDF documents, there are scans of documents. In this case, the PDF itself doesn't contain text. It's just pictures. In this case, we can use some OCR technologies that transform those images into text, uh, depending on the, if it is good quality, the PDF, like the OCR does a great job. Uh, if it is a lot of handwriting and things like that, it, it's not as accurate, but it still works fairly well. Yeah, so we have imported data like from PDF files before. Like uh, it, it happens a lot if we get uh, forensic evidence extracted from someone's computer, they might have loads of PDF. And in this case, they, they can all be imported. Uh, but yeah, the, the short answer is, yeah, we can import a number of different formats kind of uh, content. Thank you. Um, and then I have two more questions. Um, so the first is, um, is Siren just for law enforcement? Uh, no, <laughs> like, we, we, we talked about a lot, a lot about law enforcement because 
uh, it, it's just the nature of what we do. We focus on investigation. So obviously law enforcement leaves and breathes investigation. So uh, the same with intelligence, but like um, uh, we actually have these capabilities for uh, a number of different uh, scenarios and we have customers in other domains. So we have uh, customers that use it actually to uh, analyze healthcare information in hospitals and et cetera. Uh, we have another customer that uses to uh, avoid uh, doing amendments in clinical trials for pharmaceutical. And then we also have like one of the largest accommodation providers in the world as well that uses us uh, to, to facilitate internal investigations to prevent people from uh, using uh, their accommodation for illicit activities. Uh, like drug trading and uh, uh, people trafficking and so on. So yeah, we, we have a number of other domains we cover, but like uh, this is just because we have a a powerful investigative like uh, a solution. So mostly built after uh, the very sophisticated investigations that law enforcement and intelligence do, but it can be applied to a number of other domains as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then the last question is, I'm from a small agency. How is this going to solve my problems? Uh, I, Benny, I think you have a lot of experience with that. So maybe you could take So with, with smaller agencies, a lot of um, a lot of officers in the field and a lot of uh, a lot of detectives are, are beholden to do more than more than their fair share. And so what this is viewed as is more of a a force multiplier in, in a sense where you're you're having it, it's a lot easier for you to be able to take 10 people's worth of work and do it within a single person because a lot of the stuff has either been um, automated the search has been simplified or you're not having to again learn a bunch of different interfaces to be able to get the information that you need to be able to action that next step of the investigation so yeah. Well, thank you, Benny, for um, for answering that one. And now we have one more question, one additional question that just came in. Does the graph require any query knowledge? Does the graph require any query no language knowledge? Sorry about that one. Uh, not really. Uh, the graph is mostly like visual interactions. Like, so we, we simplified all of that in a way you can simply see everything that is connected, expanded. You can see if two people are connected by selecting them and asking like for a shortest path analysis, see if there's any data correlating them. So yeah, like uh, the, what we <clears throat> we focus on is like a, what we call it real time uh, user driven investigation, right? Like so, and we're talking about user, we're not talking about a data scientist is mostly like uh, investigators that do this on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis like it. So yeah, doesn't have any uh, deep technical knowledge required now. 